Hi, after I published uh, my video about this uh, camera crane, um, I was asked if I could give a little bit more technical details about what I use in this system. So, in a short video, I'm going to introduce the drives I used and all the mechanics, what you can see here. And also, I'm going to talk a little about the control of the system. And mainly, I use industrial components in my systems. I try try to uh, buy them cheap second hand even if these components are are uh, maybe used uh, for years in industry the quality is so good that uh, it still can work for ages uh, as a camera movement system so you don't have to care about how you know how how used it is because it is so robust it is so high quality that even after after years it's still very accurate and very very good quality so most of my components are industrial components coming from industrial systems coming from robots for the main linear motion i'm using an industrial belt actuator made by schneider I changed the drives. Actually, I have different drive options for this. Uh, now, what I'm using for stop motion, I don't need very fast movement, very fast, very high speed. So I'm using uh, a traditional stepper motor with um, a bore reducer. It's actually kind of gearbox. It's a special one. It doesn't have a black backslash. It has a gear ratio one to eighteen. So um, if we have, let's say, a torque like 0.3 newton meter, and uh, we multiply it by 10, let's say, because of the efficiency, we still have like 3 newton meters, which is just enough in this case. And, uh, and <laughs> the speed is really, really slow, but it's not a problem because it's stop motion now. Oh, I don't need high speed, so it's just fine. I have different motor options, as I mentioned. I have a big drive which also can be connected. It has the same, let's say, fitting. So very, very easy, easily I can change the drive. This guy is a, is a much more powerful drive. It, is, it has like uh, about uh, 0 0.8 Newton meters and it also have a gear head, which uh, has gear ratio one to 10. So I have eight Newton meters. So the dynamics here is really high because the highest speed of this drive is like like uh, uh, ten thousand rotation per sec per minute. Sorry, per minute. So uh, with this, I have really a high dynamic system, a very high speed, and also I have even a bigger drive. If it was not enough, I have this guy, which uh, has uh, I think uh, four Newton meter torque, and. Uh, it's, uh, it's even 10 times faster. So if, if I need a high speed application, then I just attach this drive. And if I need uh, lower speed and, uh, and higher torque, for example, like I want to lift some weight like uh, vertically, then uh, this guy is the good one. And if I make a stop motion, then I just use this uh, tiny guy. So this is what I use for linear. Uh, actually, this system is is not only capable to to handle stop motion applications, but it's a it's a really wide range uh, uh, mechanical system. It's it can be used for for slow motion and for high speed as well. So uh, it's really versatile, I think, and it's working quite fine. Okay, so this is the linear slide. Uh, the next part, this guy, this one. It's a, it's a base of an industrial SCARA robot. It's an Epson SCARA robot base. It's a harmonic drive over here. And there is an AC servo, which is driving the harmonic drive. Actually, it's a Yaskawa AC servo. It's 100 watt uh, driving power. And here I have gear ratio 1 to 100. So here I really have a huge torque, so I don't even need so huge torque. And it also have really nice dynamics because the drive uh, can handle high speed. And because I'm making here rotating mo motion, it's really a high speed. It can really handle high speed rotation as well. This is a really nice one. It's a base of an industrial robot. The next part, this guy, this 
I, I have six, six axes, so I'm going to explain all of the axes. This is a DC drive. It comes from another robot. It was also um, an industrial robot. It was a Hirata Skara, an older one, and it has DC drives with harmonic drive. It's really, really similar to this, this one. It's a smaller one, but this, the structure is more or less the same. Uh, this has gear ratio 1 to 80, and it has a DC uh, servo motor attached to the harmonic drive. It's quite interesting, even with, without the counterweight, it can really easily lift up like a camera with all the stuff on it. So, really nice torque, really nice torque. And, and what I really like in DC drives, I wish I could use more, but it, it's really silent. So, even in silent applications, this, this has the same structure. These drives are really nice. So, if I would go for one drive, the AC drives has like a really high frequency noise, which, which is annoying. The stepper motor also has some noise, when it, and when it moves, it also gives a very specific sound. So, I wouldn't say it's the very best, but the DC drives with a, with a gearbox. It's really, really a nice uh, solution. I think that's what they use in professional applications as well, and maybe AC drives with some filters. So, this is a DC drive, drive with a harmonic uh, drive, and, uh, and I have the, the arm lifted by this. The next uh, axis is a rotating axis again, and, um, and it's also a small DC drive. Here I have a, a, a bearing, which uh, handles the weight, so I don't attach uh, the camera straight to the shaft of uh, the drive, but, but I, have, I have a bearing system over here. It actually came from the same robot. And then I have uh, here two stepper motors. This one comes from a printer, and it also has a gear. This gear has gear ratio 1 to 160. So here I really have a very, very slow motion, but a very high torque. So that's what I need here. And actually, the problem with this guy, uh, all, all the rest of the drives doesn't have a backslash. But this guy has, because this is a planetary gear. If I just move the camera, I can feel there is a very, very tiny backslash when I'm moving the camera. But it's nice because the, the weight uh, center is not in the very middle, so the camera is kind of pulling down the whole system and, uh, and it always uh, counter forces the backslash, so the backslash is always to one direction, so the camera is quiet still. I also have an, another uh, kind of axis, I would say axis. This is a rotating axis which actually changes the focus on the camera. This is a really tiny stepper motor. I really like this guy. This is now my newest invention. All the time I try to try to put a stepper motor like this to change the focus, but since you know it's just it's just too big. We doesn't need so huge power. Let's say power here. We don't need power at all. We just we just have to rotate uh, very slowly uh, the focus gear. So we don't need power. So this really tiny guy is just fine. I really like this. It has no weight at all, and it's really nicely can be integrated uh, uh, to the camera, to the focus gear, and uh, uh, I would I would recommend you. I think this is also very very cheap. I don't know what the gear ratio can be. The, the bad thing in this that uh, we don't really have the data sheet, uh, all the accurate data, what it really knows. As I as I experimented, uh, it, uh, you can drive this tiny step motor a bit like. 100 200 milliamps so be careful not to burn it so i was talking about all the six axes um i like this structure uh it's, it's a kind of traditional camera crane because uh because all all the 3d softwares have the the uh, possibility to play, place a crane in it and if you have all the data from this really tiny crane then uh, it's really easy to model the camera movement. You just know the angles of all the axes and you can import all of them to, for example, Blender and then uh, it's really nice that you will have the same camera movement as this camera is actually moving. So um, I like this structure nowadays and it's quite, quite flexible because you have, you have motion up and down you can be closer to the target, further to the target you can also make a pan tilt 
and changing the focus and also you have a linear motion which most of the cases are really nice to have because uh, because something is moving you know you want to follow it so it's nice uh, i like this structure now i think this is the the best structure what i can uh, i can make um, let's say some words about the control of the system I, I, I experimenting different controls uh, in this uh, system i have uh, stepper motors AC drives, DC drives, all of them uh, are uh, controlled by step and direction signals. And, uh, and what I'm using now uh, is an Air Arduino uh, board. And uh, if I want to drive the stepper motors, I just use a CNC shield, which has four slots. Each slot you can place uh, a, step, a tiny stepper motor driver, but this driver is just enough for this uh, size of motors. And of course, this motor is, is just the same size or it, it can be handled. This guy is also okay. So uh, if I drive stepper motors, like the main linear motion, the focus, the pan, the tilt, then I just use this tiny, uh, uh, tiny stepper motor drive boards. And I use CNC Shield version 3. And this CNC Shield has four slots and if you want to use your system with Dragon Frame, they already supply you a code which can handle three slots. I don't know exactly why, probably this shield has an, had an older version which only had uh, three slots. So I just modified the code a little bit. It was not a big, big deal. It was not a big the modification. If you need the code, just, just write me and I will send it to you. And, uh, and I just modified the code. So with two jumpers, uh, you can also activate the four slots and one board can handle four motors. Okay, if you use the Arduino Mega, then it already can handle eight. I am thinking about, I mean thinking about changing, changing my controller to, to this Mega, but now I am using two Arduino Unos with CNC Shield version 3. Um, and this is one way how I can control my robot. So actually, uh, it can get the step the signals from Arduino. And the other way is that I have a switch, and with the switch I can wire all the step the pins to a connector, and I can connect a parallel port or a parallel port simulation. And there are different softwares like um, UCCNC, Mach3, and they can uh, they are originally designed for for uh, uh, CNC's and uh, such motion applications, but it, it can really be nice uh, for high-speed camera applications as well. I just set all the coordinates I want, and I say, okay, let's move from one point to the other, and it can really uh, give high-speed or high-frequency step the impulses. This Arduino board is a really slow uh, thing compared to ECCNC, so if I need high-speed, uh, movement, then I use uh, the parallel connection and I uh, drive my step D pins using a kind of uh, motion control, external motion controller. And if I want to do stop motion and something like that, I also have an own software which actually just moves to one point to the other. It's kind of time-lapse software, so I want, if I want to, want to have a time-lapse, I don't need uh, uh, softwares like Dragon Frame. I can just say, okay, this is the first point, this is the second, and please move. And the time to, for the movement is this and this. And then uh, the system just goes what it has to do. So this way I don't have to go all the time carry uh, the computer, um, I can parameterize it by, by my phone. This is also an option. And, um, and uh, this is actually how the control uh, builds up. It's quite a simple stuff. Um, the interesting thing that now I'm using two Arduino boards, uh, I'm planning to change it to one, but, uh, but it's, it's working now. It occupies two USB ports on the computer, but there is no any other uh, disadvantage of this, of this structure. Um, I just want to say a, a few words about um, why it's good to use industrial components. I really, I really uh, tried different methods. I really tried to make own gearboxes and and uh, and now on this robot, okay, there is still a lot of things I had to do, like like attachments, attaching uh, to gearboxes to the motors. That's what I actually did on this robot. I just figured out the whole structure. The original robot didn't have such an arm, so this part had to be uh, uh, machined as well. So still a lot of, lot of uh, tiny, 
tiny components I had to product. And, and this part, it was another robot, this part was another robot. So, okay, uh, basically I had to do a lot of, uh, lot of uh, 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 tiny works, but uh, all the main components came from robot, from industrial systems. And for example, just let me just show you something. This is um, uh, the end of a, of a six axis robot arm. This is what, what moves the tool. And it's really, really a nice stuff because it already has two rotating axes with two harmonic drives, no backslash at all, very accurate stuff, and, and actually kind of good for, you know, filming that application. I got this robot, it's a Mitsubishi, it was, it used to be a Mitsubishi robot, and it come from a scrapyard, it was quite cheap, and I just changed the motors, because usually Control was nowhere, of course. <laughs> Cables were nowhere, of course. So I had to change the motors because the original encoders couldn't be used. I changed the, the motors, I changed the encoders. As you can see, it's a bit uh, different size and uh, it's an AC drive. It's a Simatic AC drive. And, uh, and it's really a nice stuff. Two axes, not too heavy. Industrial stuff take uh, can, can work forever. And uh, so if, if I, I could recommend one thing for somebody who wants to build something like this that it's really a nice that first look around and see what you have ready to use so when i start to build something okay maybe it's not it's not a good thing but that's what how i, I do this uh, i first uh, look components so I don't start making AutoCAD drawings like I want to this and this, but I just look around and what I can see what fits more or less to my system. And if I find something with potential, <laughs> let's say, with potential, then I just start thinking how I can integrate these components <laughs> together. And at the end, uh, because these components are industrial components, uh, I think at the end I'll get a quite nice and robust and reliable system. And uh, and it's much oversized than you know if I start 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 doing something from scratch. So um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little presentation. And um, and if you have any question, just uh, uh, just just write me. And it's nice. Uh, I'm glad if you if you follow my Facebook page or YouTube channel. So uh, thank you for your attention. Goodbye.